Act One of If I Had a Father by George MacDonald. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Arthur Gervais, read by Tricia G. Colonel Gervais, read by Larry Wilson. Warren, read by Lian Yao. Constance, read by Hannah Mary. Waterfield, read by Son of the Exiles. Mrs. Clifford, read by Beth Thomas. James, read by Alan Mapstone. Maddie, read by Devorah Allen. Susan, read by Sonia. Thomas, read by Phil Benson. Bill, read by Thomas Peter. Jack, read by T. J. Burns. Jim, read by Jasmine Selma. Policeman, read by Craig Franklin. First Boy, read by Philip Gould. Second Boy, read by Adriana Sassioto. Third Boy, read by Eva Davis. Stage Directions, read by Raj. If I Had a Father, a Drama, Act One, Scene a sculptor's studio arthur gervais working at a clay figure and humming a tune a knock come in throws a wet cloth over the clay enter warren by the door communicating with the house ah warren how do you do how are you gervais i'm delighted to see you once more i have but just heard of your return i've been home but a fortnight i was just thinking of you i was certain i should find you at work you see my work can go on by any light it is more independent than yours i wish it weren't then why because there would be a chance of our getting you out of your den sometimes like any other wild beast when dark falls eh just so and where the good why should you roar a little now and then like other honest lions i doubt if the roaring lions do much beyond roaring and i doubt whether the lion that won't even whisk his tail will get food enough shoved through his bars to make it worth his while to keep a cage in london i certainly shall not make use of myself to recommend my work what is it now well nothing only a little fancy of my own there again the moment i set foot in your study you throw the sheet over your clay and when i ask you what you are working at oh a little fancy of my own i couldn't tell it was you coming let me see what you've been doing then oh she's a mere lot's wife as yet warren approaching the figure of course of course i understand all that gervais laying his hand on his arm excuse me i'd rather not show it i beg your pardon i couldn't believe you really meant it i'll show you the mould if you like i don't know what you mean by that you would never throw a wet sheet over a cast gervais lifts a painting from the floor and sets it on an easel warren regards it for a few moments in silence oh by jove gervais someone sent you down the wrong turn you ought to have been a painter what a sky and what a sea those blues and greens rich as a peacock's feather eyes superb a tropical night the dolphin at its last gasp in the west and all above an abyss of blue at the bottom of which the stars lie like gems in the mine shaft of the darkness you seem to have taken the wrong turn warren you ought to have been a poet such a thing as that puts the slang out of a fellow's bend i'm glad you like it i do myself though it falls short of my intent sadly enough but i don't for the life of me see what this has to do with that you said something about a mould i will tell you what i meant every individual aspect of nature looks to me as if about to give birth to a human form embodying that of which itself only dreams in this way landscape painting is in my eyes the mother of sculpture that apollo is of the summer dawn that aphrodite of the moonlit sea this picture represents the mother of my psyche under the sheet there yes you shall see her some day 
but to show your work too soon is to uncork your champagne before dinner well you've spoiled my picture i shall go home and scrape my canvas to the bone on second thoughts i will show you my psyche uncovers the clay warren stands in admiration enter waterfield by same door oh warren here you are before me mr gervais i hope i see you well mr waterfield an old friend of yours gervais i believe i cannot appropriate the honour i was twice in your studio at rome but it's six months ago mr gervais ah using his eyeglass what a charming figure a psyche wings suggested by very skilful contour lovely altogether antique in pose and expression is she a commission no then i beg you will consider her one excuse me i never work on commission at least never in this kind a bust or two i have done mm, by jove i should like to see your model this is perfect are you going to carve her possibly uncommissioned if at all well i can't call it running any risk what lines you will let me drop in some day when you've got your model here impossible you don't mean i had no model no model <laughs> you must excuse me gervais takes up the wet sheet i understand reasons a little mystery enhances eh is convenient too balks intrusion throws the drapery over the mignonette i understand gervais covers the clay oh pray don't carry out my figure that is a damper now i am not fond of acting the showman you must excuse me i am busy oh well some other time when you've got on with her a bit good morning ta ta warren good morning this way if you please shows him out by the door to the street how did the fellow find his way here i am the culprit i'm sorry to say he asked me for your address and i gave it him how long have you known him a month or two don't bring him here again don't say i brought him i didn't do that but i'm afraid you've not seen the last of him oh yes i have old martha would let in anybody but i've got a man now william enter colonel gervais dressed as a servant you didn't see that gentleman just gone i'm afraid william no sir don't let in any one calling himself waterfield no sir i'm going out with mr warren i shall be back shortly very well sir exit into the house gervais to warren i can't touch clay again till i get that fellow out of my head come along then exeunt gervais and warren re-enter colonel gervais polishing a boot regards it with dissatisfaction ah oh, confound the thing i wish it were a scabbard when i think i'm getting it all right one rub more and it's gone dull again the house door opens slowly and thomas peeps cautiously in what sort of a place be this maister you ought to have asked that outside how did you get in by th door all if you leave th door open th dogs'll come in i must speak to martha again she will leave the street door open well you needn't look so frightened it ain't a robber's cave that be more no no not for sartin sure maister nobody mun count on nobody up to london they tells me but if a gentleman axes me into his house i'm noan bound to be afeard oh come in for me ap you can help me it be a curious place what dun you mak here what would you think now 
it looks to more like a mason shed a great one <laughs> you're not so far wrong thomas advancing it do look a queer place oh be none so sure about it but they wanna cut me throat bout warning or bother no one sits down on the dais and wipes his face well or be almost weary is there anything i can do for you nay i dunnot know but bout how get somebody to help me i dunnot think i'll come to th end in haste or oh, we're looking for some at all lost mon did you come all the way from lancashire to look for it eh hey, lad or oh, thou'st they it's bound to know where i come from <laughs> anybody can tell that the first word you spoke i mean no offence thomas looking disappointed well no one's time but i dunnot say that's ne'er been to lancashire this hell no i don't say that i've been to lancashire several times where to why manchester that's none of it and lancaster tut tut that's none of it neither and liverpool i was once there for a whole week nay nay no other of those places fur away off em ah but what does it matter where i have or haven't been mun not tell thee again i've lost some at tell thee didst a ne'er ear tell a thowd woman at lost a shilling who couldn't sit her down bout who found it yon's me hides his face in his hands ah now i begin to guess you don't mean you've lost your thomas starting up and grasping his stick with both hands oh do me now i've lost more young lass nor dunnot say that's found her but i do say thou knows where who is oh do there near then what on earth makes you think that i don't know what you're after thou knows well enough thou knowed what i'd lost afore i towed though you be denying your own name thou knows i'll tear the fourth police bout thou gear up or will what story have you to tell the police then they'll want to know story says to the duels ith mon didn't o say ith mon who steeled her away go into this house not mitch over half an hour ago o say him wi me own eyes why didn't you speak to him he pop it in at the same door and there o've been a watching ever since o i've not took me eyes off of it he's somewheres now in this same house colonel gervais aside he may have been out in the morning but you see there are more doors than one to the place there is a back door and there is a door out into the street eh eh that one has to do with t'other have it three door holes to one shed that looks bad he's not here whoever it was there's not a man but myself in the place eh hey, more to know you're not playing a marlock wi me he'll be up i th house theer i mun go look going colonel gervais preventing him and how am i to know you're not a housebreaker don't you think an owd mon like myself would be of mitch use for sich wark as that mon the more fit for a spy though to see what might be made of it eh hey, mon don't they do such things as you but i'm seeching nothing mon nor mouse that donnot belong me o oh, tell you true give me my matty and i'll trouble you no more o oh, in it if you'll give me back my matty comes close up to him and lays his hand on his arm be you a feather mon yes of a pratty young lass well no i have but a son then thou winnot help me i shall be very glad to help you if you will tell me how tell your maister at matty's owd feathers come at the gate for ratchdar to fotter warm and i'll be much obliged to him if he'll let her go bout longer delay for a mother wants her to home who's but poorly tell your maister that but i don't believe my master knows anything about her o oh, tell him the o oh, say the mon go into this house but a few minutes ago you've mistaken somebody for him well i'm bound to tell the more two three days ago o oh, say more chilt come out of this same door o oh, main the house door yon 
are you sure of that sure as death or say a back her back who could be sure of a back by th maskins dost to think i dunnot know more matty's back i seen her come out of that door or tell her why didn't you speak to her or could and she didn't answer or didn't go aloud or not willing to have any mac of a din but you followed her surely or did but o are none so good at walking as o were when o come the stones are blistered my fet and it's a edge of the dark like o cannot see weel at night wi all the lamps and afore o geet up wi her who's round th nook and gwon from a seat there are ten thousand girls in london you might take for your own under such circumstances not seen more than the backs of them ten thousand girls like more matty says to we a great eyes and a long year Pooh. but you've just said you didn't see her face don't all know what the face of more child's be like bout seeing of it or known of a lump yet nobbery as say a once wouldn't know her again colonel gervais aside ah he's a lunatic i don't see what i can do for you old fellow thomas rising and o met a known it's bout axin o right o a great foe but o bound to come in o long to go through the same door wi more matty good day sir it be light mayst a light mon god's curse upon o sich turns his back after a moment turns again no i winnot say that for more matty's sake or winnot say that god forgi ye going by the house this way please opening the street door o oh, see o oh, i'm not to have a chance of seeing o the motty o the mon exit colonel gervais resumes his boot absently re-enter thomas shaking his fist but o tell the o stick to the place day and neat o will or wool or wool come back to-morrow come back sister or not go away growing fierce will to give me my matty well no i'm bound to stand here so much longer will to give me my matty i cannot give you what i haven't got or oh, break the head thou villain threatening him with his stick eh matty matty to law such a mon's mace the more and me i would dare for thee matty exit it's all a mistake of course there are plenty of young men but my arthur's none of such i cannot believe it of him the daughter if i could find her she would settle the question it begins to grow dark i must help the old man to find her he's sure to come back arthur does not look the least like it but polishes vigorously i cannot get this boot to look like a gentleman's i wish i had taken a lesson or two first i'll get hold of a shoe-black and make him come for a morning or two no he does not look like it now there he comes goes on polishing enter gervais william colonel gervais turning yes sir light the gas any one called yes sir who i don't know sir lighting the gas you should have asked his name stands before the clay contemplating it i'm sorry i forgot sir it was only an old man from the country after his daughter he said come to offer his daughter or himself perhaps begins to work at the figure colonel gervais watching him stealthily he looked a respectable old party uh, from lancashire he said i dare say you will have many such callers take their address models you know if he calls again sir ask him to leave his address i say but he told me you knew her possibly i had a good many models before i left but it's of no consequence i don't want any at present he seemed in a great way sir and swore i couldn't make him out ah hm he says he saw her come out of the house has there been any girl here have you seen any about no sir 
my aunt had a dressmaker to meet her here the other evening i have had no model since i came back the man was in a sad taking about her sir i didn't know what to make of it there seems some truth uh, something suspicious perhaps my aunt can throw some light upon it colonel gervais lingers that will do exit colonel gervais how oddly the man behaves a sunstroke in india perhaps or he may have had a knock on the head i must keep my eye on him stops working steps backward and gazes at the psyche she is growing very like someone who can it be she knows she is puzzling me the beauty see how she is keeping back a smile she knows if she lets one smile out her whole face will follow it through the clay how strange the half-lights of memory are you know and you don't know both at once like the bat in the twilight you are sure of it and the same moment it is nowhere who is my psyche like the forehead above the eyebrow and round by the temple the half playful half sorrowful curve of the lip the hope in the lifted eyelid there is more there than ever i put there some power has been shaping my ends by heaven i have it no yes it is it is constance momently dawning out of the clay what does this mean she never gave me a sitting at least she has not done so for the last ten years yet here she is she and no other i never thought she was beautiful when she came with my aunt the other day though i did fancy i saw a new soul dawning through the lovely face here it is the same soul breaking through the clay of my psyche i will give it just one touch to the corner of the mouth gives a few touches then steps back again and contemplates the figure turns away and walks up and down the light darkens to slow plaintive music which lasts for a minute then the morning begins to dawn gleaming blue upon the statues and casts and revealing gervais seated before his psyche gazing at her he rises and exit enter colonel gervais and looks about i don't know what to make of it or rather i'm afraid i do know what to make of it looks bad he's not been in bed all night but it shows he has some conscience left and that's a comfort enter mrs clifford peeping round cautiously what clara you here so early well you know brother you're so fond of mystery it's very kind of you to come but we must be very careful i can't tell when my master may be home has he been out all night then oh no he's just gone i never knew him such an early bird i made sure he was safe in bed for a couple of hours yet but i do trust walter you have had enough of this fooling and are prepared to act like a rational man and a gentleman on the contrary clara with my usual obstinacy i am more determined than ever that my boy shall not know me until as i told you i have rendered him such service as may prove me not altogether unworthy to be his father twenty years of neglect will be hard to surmount but mere menial service cannot discharge the least portion of your obligations as his father alone can you really serve him you persist in misunderstanding me this is not the service i mean i scorn the fancy this is only the means as i told you plainly before of finding out how i may serve him of learning what he really needs or most desires if i fail in discovering how to recommend myself to him i shall go back to india and content myself with leaving him a tolerable fortune however a hare-brained fellow like you walter could have made such a soldier why don't you tell your boy you love him and have done with it i will as soon as i have proof to back the assertion i tell you it is rank pride it may be pride sister but it is the pride of a repentant thief who puts off his confession until he has the money in his hand to prove the genuineness of his sorrow it never was of any use to argue with you walter 
You know that, or at least I know it, so I give up. I trust you have got over your prejudice against his profession. It is not my fault. In truth, I had forgotten the profession, as you call it, in watching the professor. And has it not once occurred to you to ask how he may take such watching? By the time he is aware of it, he will be ready to understand it. But suppose he should discover you before you have thus established your position? I must run the risk. Suppose, then, you should thus find out something he would not have you know. Do you imagine his servant might know a thing he would hide from his father? I do not, Walter. I can trust him. But he might well resent the espionage of even his father. You cannot get rid of the vile look of the thing. Again, I say, my boy shall be my judge, and my love shall be my plea. In any case, I shall have to ask his forgiveness. Ah, oh, but there is his key in the lock. Run into the house. Exit Mrs. Clifford, enter Gervais, and goes straight to the psyche. Breakfast is waiting, sir. By and by, William. You haven't been in bed, sir. Well, what of that? I hope you're not ill, sir. Not in the least. I work all night sometimes. You can go. Colonel Gervais lingers with a searching gaze at the psyche. I don't want anything. Pardon me, sir, but I am sure you are ill. You've done no work since last night. Gervais with displeasure. I am quite well and wish to be alone. Mayn't I go and fetch a doctor, sir? It is better to take things in time. You are troublesome. Exit Colonel Gervais. What can the fellow mean? He looked at me so strangely, too. He's officious, that's all, I dare say. A good sort of man, I do think. William! What is it in the man's face? Enter Colonel Gervais. Is the breakfast ready? Quite ready, sir. I'm sorry I spoke to you so hastily. The fact is... Don't mention it, sir. Speak as you will to me. I shan't mind it. When there's anything on a man's conscience, I, I, I mean on a man's mind. Uh, what do you mean? I mean when there is anything there, he can't well help his temper, sir. I don't understand you. But anyhow, you go too far, William. I beg your pardon, sir. I forgot myself. I do humbly beg your pardon. Uh, shall I make some fresh coffee, sir? It's not cold. It's only stood too long. The coffee will do well enough. Exit Colonel Gervais. Is she so beautiful? Turning to the psyche. Is there a likeness? I see it. Nonsense. A mere chance confluence of the ideal and the actual. Even then the chance must mean something. Such a mere chance would indeed be a strange one. Enter Constance. Oh, my heart, here she comes, my psyche herself. Well, Constance. Oh, Arthur, I'm so glad I found you. I want to talk to you about something. I know you don't care much about me now, but I must tell you, for it would be wrong not. Gervais aside. How beautiful she is. What can she have to tell me about? It cannot be. It shall not be. Sit down, won't you? Offering her a chair. No, you sit there. Pointing to the dais. And I will sit here. Placing herself on the lower step. It was here I used to sit so often when I was a little girl. Why can't one keep little? I was always with you then. Sighs. It is not my fault, Constance. Oh, no, I suppose it can't be. Only I don't see why. Oh, Arthur, where should I be but for you? I saw the old place yesterday. How dreadful, and yet how dear it was. Who took you there? Nobody. I went alone. It was hardly safe. I don't like your going out alone, Constance. Why, Arthur, I used to know every court and alley about Shoreditch better than I know Berkeley Square now. But what made you go there? I went to find a dressmaker who has been working for my aunt and lost my way. And, would you believe it, I was actually frightened. No wonder. There are rough people about there. 
I never used to think them rough when I lived among them with my father and mother. There must be just as good people there as anywhere else. Yet I could not help shuddering at the thought of living there again. How strange it made me feel! You have been my angel, Arthur. What would have become of me if you hadn't taken me? I dare not think. I have had my reward, Constance. You are happy. Not quite. There's something I want to tell you. Tell on, child. Oh, thank you. That is how you used to talk to me. Hesitates. Gervais with foreboding. Well, what is it? Constance pulling the fingers of her gloves. A gentleman, you know him, has been calling upon aunt and me. We have seen a good deal of him. Who is he? Mr. Waterfield. Keeps her eyes on the floor. Well? He says he, he, he wants me to marry him. Aunt likes him. And you? I like him, too. I don't think I like him enough. I dare say I shall. It is so good of him to take poor me. He is very rich, they say. Have you accepted him? I am afraid he thinks so. Y yes I hardly know. Haven't you been rather in a hurry, Constance? No, indeed. I haven't been in a hurry at all. He has been a long time trying to make me like him. I have been too long a burden to Mrs. Clifford. So it's her doing, then? You were away, you know. Yes, too far, chipping stones and making mud pies. I don't know what you mean by that, Arthur. Oh, nothing. I mean that, that, of course, if you are engaged to him, then... I'm afraid I've done very wrong, Arthur. If I had thought you would care, I knew Aunt would be pleased. She wanted me to have him, I knew. I ought to do what I can to please her, ought I not? I have no right to... Surely, surely. Yes, yes, I understand. It was not your fault. Only you mustn't marry him if you... Thank you for telling me. I ought to have told you before... before I let him speak to me again. But I didn't think you would care. Not much. Yes, yes. Constance looking up with anxiety. Ah, oh, you are vexed with me, Arthur. I see how wrong it was now. I never saw you look like that. I'm very, very sorry. Bursts into tears. No, no, child. Only it is rather sudden, and I want to think about it. Shall I send William home with you? No, thank you. I have a cab waiting. You're not angry with your little beggar, Arthur? What is there to be angry about, child? That I did anything without asking you first. Nonsense. You couldn't help it. You're not to blame one bit. Oh, yes, I am. I ought to have asked you first. But indeed, I did not know you would care. Goodbye. Shall I go at once? Goodbye. Exit Constance, looking back troubled. Come at last. Oh, fool, fool, fool! In love with her at last, and too late. For three years I haven't seen her, have not once written to her. Since I came back I've seen her just twice, and now in the very hell of love. The ragged little darling that used to lie coiled up there in that corner. If it were my sister, it would be hard to lose her so, and to such a fellow as that not even a gentleman. How could she take him for one? That does perplex me. Ah, oh, well, I suppose men have borne such things before, and men will bear them again. I must work. Nothing but work will save me. Approaches the psyche, but turns from it with a look of despair and disgust. What a fool I have been! Constance, Constance, a brute like that to touch one of her fingers! God in heaven, it will drive me mad. Rushes out, leaving the door open. Enter Colonel Gervais. Gone again. And without his breakfast. My poor boy. There's something very wrong with you. It's that girl. It must be. But there's conscience in him yet. It is all my fault. 
If I had been a father to him, this would never have happened. If he were to marry the girl now, only who can tell, but she led him astray. I have known such a thing. Sits down and buries his face in his hands. Enter Waterfield. Is Mr. Gervais in? Colonel Gervais rising. Uh, no, sir. Tell him I called, will you? Exit. Yes, sir. Forgot again. A young man. A gentleman or can? A don't know. Think the latter. Enter Thomas. And you had speak a much ill yet, sir. Colonel Gervais starting up. In the name of God, I know nothing of your child. But bring her here, and I will give you a hundred pounds in golden sovereigns. A hey, more to futter here, when I do not know where who be, sir. That's your business. Bring her, and there will be your money. Don't you think, sir, all the gowden sovereigns in the Bank of England would put a sharper edge on me owd eyes when they look for my lass? Eh, hey, mon, you do not know the heart of a feather, of the feather of a lass barn, sir, and you killed some buried her, and ne'er be a sorry for it. If you be dead and gone, tell me, sir, and all go home again, for my owd lass be me and lonesome bout me, and we'll wait till we go to her, for who win it come no more to us for anything i know your daughter is alive and well bring her here i say and i will make you happy oh shannot want this of the silverings either to make me happy then maister if o head a howd o my lass it's none a year o'd be a coming wi her it's reet straight warm to her mother we be goin o be boun nay nay mon o'm noan such a great foo as you tack me for exit colonel gervais follows him enter gervais sits down before the psyche but without looking at her oh those fingers they are striking terrible chords on my heart i will conquer it but i will love her the spear shall fill its own wound to draw it out and die would be no victory i'll but lie down and bleed a while and then i'll rise and fight again brave old sir andrew enter colonel gervais i beg your pardon sir a young man called while you were out gervais listlessly very well william is there any message if he calls again sir he said he would no colonel gervais lingers you can go i hope you feel better sir quite well can i get you anything sir no thank you i want nothing why do you stay can't you think of something i can do for you sir fetch that red cloth yes sir throw it over that this sir no no the clay there thank you you knock at the door see who that is are you at home sir that depends not to mr waterfield oh my head my head exit colonel gervais enter constance gervais starts but keeps his head leaning on his hand i forgot to say to you arthur but you are ill what is the matter dear arthur gervais without looking up nothing only a headache do come home with me and let aunt and me nurse you don't be vexed with me any more i will do whatever you like i couldn't go home without seeing you again and now i find you ill not a bit I am only dreadfully busy. I must go out of town. I am so busy. I can't stay in it a moment longer. I have so many things to do. Mayn't I come and see you while you work? I never used to interrupt you. I want so to sit once more in my old place. Draws a stool towards him. No, no, not, not there. Constance used to sit there. William! You frighten me, Arthur. Enter Colonel Gervais. Bring a chair, William. Constance sits down like a chidden child. Exit Colonel Gervais. I must have offended you more than I thought, Arthur. What can I say? It is so stupid to be always saying, I am sorry. No, no, but someone may call. You mean more than that. Will you not let me understand? 
your friend mr waterfield called a few minutes ago he will be here again presently i dare say constance indifferently indeed i suppose you appointed expected to meet him here arthur do you think i would come to you to meet him i saw him this morning i don't want to see him again i wish you knew him why should you want me to know him because you would do him good what good does he want done him he has got beautiful things in him talks well in bits arms and feet and faces never anything like turning to the psyche why have you has she been naughty too is it only naughty things that must be put out of sight constance dear arthur you spoke like your own self then gervais rising hurriedly excuse me i must go it is very rude but william enter colonel gervais yes sir fetch a hansom directly yes sir exit you do frighten me arthur i am sure you are ill not at all i have an engagement i must go then must i do not think me unkind i will not think anything you would not have me think re-enter colonel gervais the cab is at the door sir thank you then show miss la cordere out stay i will open the door for her myself exeunt gervais and constance he speaks like one in despair forcing every word if he should die oh my god re-enter gervais walks up and down the room are you going sir no i have sent the lady in the cab then hadn't you better lie down sir lie down what do you mean i'm not in the way of lying down except to sleep and let me go for the doctor sir the doctor <laughs> you are a soldier you say yes sir right we're all soldiers or ought to be i will put you to your catechism what is a soldier's first duty obedience sir Jervey sits down and leans his head on his hands colonel gervais watches him ah obedience is it then turn those women out they will hurt you may kill you but you must not mind that they burn they blister and they blast for as white as they look the hottest is the white fire but duty old soldier obedience you know <laughs> oh my head my head i believe i am losing my senses william i was in a bad part of the town this morning i went to see a place i knew long ago it had gone to hell but the black edges of it were left there was a smell and i can't get it out of me oh william william take hold of me don't let them come near me psyche is laughing at me i told you to throw the red cloth over her oh my poor boy don't fancy you're my father though i wish you were but i cannot allow that why the devil didn't you throw the red cloth over that butterfly she's sucking the blood from my heart you said the psyche sir the red cloth is over the psyche sir look yes yes i beg your pardon take it off it is too red it will scorch her wings it burns my brain take it off i say colonel gervais uncovers the psyche there i told you she's laughing at me ungrateful child i'm not her cupid cover her up not the red cloth again it's too hot i say i won't torture her i am a man and i can bear it she is a woman and she shan't bear it sinks back in his chair colonel gervais lays him on the dais and sits down beside him his heart's all right and when a fellow's miserable over his faults there must be some way out of them but the consequences ah there's the rub what's the matter where am i i must fetch a doctor sir you've been in a faint why shouldn't i keep in it it was very nice you know nothing and that's the nicest thing of all why is it we can't stop william i don't understand you sir stop living i mean 
it's no use killing yourself for you don't stop then at least they say you go on living all the same if i thought it did mean stopping william do come to your room sir i won't i'll stop here how hot it is don't let anybody in stretches out his hand colonel gervais holds it he falls asleep what shall i do if he married her he'd be miserable and make her miserable too i'll take her away somewhere i'll be a father to her i'll tend her as if she were his widow oh, but what confusions would follow alas alas one crime is the mother of a thousand miseries and now he's in for a fever a typhus perhaps i must find this girl what a sweet creature that miss la Cordere is if only he might have her i don't care what she was don't let them near me william they will drive me mad they think i shall love them i will not if she comes one step nearer i shall strike her you diana hecate hellcat fire-hearted chaos is burning me to ashes my brain is a cinder some water william here it is sir but just look to psyche there ah she's off there she goes melting away in the blue like a dissolving vapor bring me my field-glass william i may catch a glimpse of her yet make haste pray don't talk so sir do be quiet or you will make yourself very ill think what will become of me if what worse would you be william you are a soldier i must talk you are all wrong about it it keeps me quiet holding his head with both hands i should go raving mad else wildly give me some water he drinks eagerly then looks slowly round the room now they are gone and i do believe they won't come again i see everything and your face william you are very good to me very patient i should die if it weren't for you i would die for you sir would you but perhaps you don't care much for your life anybody might have my life for the asking i dare say it's just as good to be dead ah there is a toad a toad with a tail no it's a toad with a slow worm after him take them away william thank you i used to think life pleasant but now somehow there's nothing in it she told me the truth about it constance did don't let those women come back what if i should love them william love and hate them both at once william william you knock at the door see who that is mind you don't let them in martha is here sir she's but an old woman she can't keep them out they would walk over her all the goddesses have such long legs you go and look you'll easily know them if they've got no irises to their eyes don't let them in for the love of god william real women have irises to their eyes those have none those frightful snowy beauties and yet snow is very nice and i'm so hot there they come again exit colonel gervais enter mrs clifford aunt aunt help me there they come what is it my arthur they shan't hurt you i am here i will take care of you yes yes you will i am not a bit afraid of them now do you know them aunt i'll tell you a secret they are juno and diana in venus they hate sculptors but i never wronged them three white women only between their fingers and behind their knees they are purple and inside their lips when they smile and in the hollows of their eyes ugh they want me to love them and they say you are all all of you women no better than they are i know that is a lie for they have no eyelids and no irises to their eyes dear boy they shan't come near you shall i sing to you and drive them away no don't i can't bear birds in my brain how long have you had this headache laying her hand on his forehead only a year or two since the white woman came that woman pointing to the psyche 
she's been buried for ages and won't grow brown there's no woman there arthur of course not it was an old story that bothered me oh my head my head there's my father standing behind the door and won't come in he could help me now if he would william show my father in but he isn't in the story so he can't do try to keep yourself quiet arthur the doctor will be here in a few minutes he shan't come here he would put the white woman out she does smell earthy but i won't part with her you knock what a devil of a noise why don't they use the knocker what's the use of taking a sledge-hammer it's that stupid james enter constance mrs clifford goes to meet her constance you go and hurry the doctor i will stay with arthur is he very ill aunt i'm afraid he is jerry is sitting up constance constance here i am running to him oh my head i wish i could find somewhere to lay it sit by me constance and let me lay my head upon your shoulder for one minute only one minute it aches so she sits down by him his head sinks on her shoulder mrs clifford looks annoyed and exit thank you thank you dear arthur sobbing you used to like me i could not believe you hated me now you have forgiven me dear head he closes his eyes slow plaintive music jerry's half waking i can't read when i get to the bottom of the page i wonder what it is all about i shall never get to garibaldi and if i don't i shall never get farther if i could but keep that one line away it drives me mad mad he took her by the lily-white hand i could strangle myself for thinking of such things but they will come i won't go mad i should never get to garibaldi and never be rid of this red-hot ploughshare ploughing up my heart i shall not go mad i will die like a man arthur arthur god in heaven she is there and all the others are behind her psyche psyche don't speak to those women come alone and i will tear my heart out and give it you it is psyche herself now and the rest are gone psyche listen it's only me arthur your own little constance if aunt would but let me stay and nurse you but i don't know what's come to her she's not like herself at all who's that behind you behind me looking round there's nobody behind me i thought there was somebody behind you william what can have become of william i dare say aunt has sent him somewhere then he's gone he's gone you're not afraid of being left alone with me arthur oh no of course not what can have become of william don't you know they sent him not those women but the dead people to look after me he is a good fellow he said he would die for me <laughs> not much in that is there don't laugh so dear arthur well i won't i have something to tell you constance i will try to keep my senses till i've told you do tell me i hope i haven't done anything more to vex you indeed i am sorry i won't speak to that man again if you like i would rather not if you wish it what right have i to dictate to you my child every right i am yours i belong to you nobody owned me when you took me don't talk like that you will drive me mad arthur arthur listen to me constance i am going to garibaldi he wants soldiers i must not live an idle life any longer we must part constance good-bye my darling no no not yet we'll talk about it by and by you see i shall have ever so many things to make for you before you can go smiling garibaldi can't wait constance and i can't wait i shall die if i stop here oh arthur you are in some trouble and you won't tell me what it is so i can't help you i shall be killed i know i mean to be will you think of me sometimes give me one kiss i may have a last kiss constance weeping 
my heart will break if you talk like that arthur i will do anything you please there's something wrong dreadfully wrong and it must be my fault oh there's that man starting up he shall not come here runs to the house door and stands listening with her hand on the key end of act one act two of if i had a father by george macdonald this is a librivox recording all librivox recordings are in the public domain for more information or to volunteer please visit librivox.org act two scene a street in mayfair mrs clifford's house a pastry cook's shop boys looking in at the window i say jim ain't it a lot of grub if i was a pig now i'd like to hear bill a-sposin of hisself go it bill there ain't nothing he can't suppose hisself jim bein as you ain't a pig bill you've got your own trotters and your own tater trap thereupon blue bobby accosts me with the remark i wants you bill and see me too paralyzed to bow he pops me in that ere jug without ere a handle mother kept pig once what was he like jack as like any other pig as ever he could look except that where other pigs is black he wore white and where other pigs is white he wore black did you have the milk in your tea jack pigs ain't got no milk jim you stoop pigs has milk jack only they don't give it to calves i wish i was a old mare go it again bill he ought to have been a beak bill ought what would you do bill supposing as how you was the lord mayor i'd take all the bakes and all the palers and put their own bracelets on em and feed em once a day on scraps of wittles to bring out the hunger a curve can't be hungry upon nothing at all he gets what mother calls the squeamishes well bill well the worry moment their bellies was as long and as loose as an oakler bag of a winter's morning i'd bring em all up to this ere winder five or six at a time with the darbies on mind you and i'm to be there to see bill ain't i if you're good jim and don't forget your prayers my eye it's as good as penny gaff go it bill then i up and addresses him my lords and gentlemen of course is how you're all good boys and goes to church and don't eat too many wills and don't take off your bracelets when you goes to bed you shall observe me eat go it bill i likes you bill now jim i must close the imagination is hungry gift as the cock said when he bolted the pebbles let's adjourn the meeting yes come along tain't a comfortable corner this year the wind cuts round uncommon sharp them pies ain't good leastways not to look at they aren't digestible but looky here jack and jim how came our kids puts an arm round the neck of each and whispers first to one and then to the other enter matey and susan now matey we're close to the house and i don't want to be seen with you for she's mad at me <sighs> you must have made her mad then sue she maddened me first what else when she wouldn't believe a word i said she'd have sworn on the gospel book we sent the parcel up the spout but she'll believe you and give you something and then we'll have a chop how can you expect that sue when the work's lost never mind you go and see i shan't take it susan i couldn't stuff and nonsense i'll wait you round the corner i don't like the smell of them pastry things exit matey walks past the window <sighs> i don't like going it makes me feel a thief to be suspected no it's all matey there's all matey 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 ah bill you're there are you yes matey it's a top show you walks up and takes your choice laceways you makes it somebody else takes it wouldn't you like to take your choice sometimes bill in course i would then why don't you work and better yourself a bit bless you mad eh myself is very comfortable he never complains you're hungry sometimes ain't you most remarkable hungry mate this very moment 
Odd you should ask now, ain't it? You would get plenty to eat if you would work. Thank you. I'd rather not. Them as ain't hungry never enjoys their damaged tarts. But I'm happy there's the odds. As the cat said to the mouses, wanted to be let off the engagement. Why should I work more than any other gentleman? A gentleman that don't work is a curse to his neighbours, Bill. Bless you, May. I ain't a curse. Now to nobody. I don't see as you've got any call to say that, Matty. I don't go faking ties or cracking cribs. Not of an old sort. And I don't mind doing of an old job if it is an old one. Don't go for to say that again, Matty. I won't then, Bill. But just look at yourself. You're all in rags. Rags is the area, as the Sky Terrier said to the black and tan. I shouldn't object to a new pair of old trousers, though. Why don't you have a pair of real new ones? If you would only sweep a crossing. There ain't a crossing but what's took. Besides, my legs ain't put together for one place all day long. It ain't to be done, Matty. They can't do it. There's the shoe black business, then. That ain't so bad, cause you can shoulder your box and trudge. But if it's all the same to you, Matty, I'd rather enjoy life. They say it's short. But it ain't the same to me. It's so bad for you to be idle, Bill. All it is I knows on. I'm tolerable jolly, so long as I get some browns for my bed. Wouldn't you like a bed with a blanket to it? Well, yeah, if it was scuffed to me. But I don't go in for knocking of yourself about to sleep warm. Well, look here, Bill. It's all Susan and I can do to pay for our room and get a bit of bread and a cup of tea. It ain't enough. If you were to earn a few pence now... Oh, golly! I never thought of that. What a hass I were, to be sure. I'll go a shoe blacking tomorrow. I will. Did you ever black a shoe, Bill? Oh, I tried a boot once, it. When Jim wore a blacking for a day or two. But I made nothing on it. Nothing worth mentioning. The blacking or something was wrong. The gentleman said it were cove dust, and he slogged me, and advised me to go on and learn my trade. And what did you say to that? Hollowed out, shy your boots as loud as I could holler. You must try my boots next time you come. This very night, Matty. I make em shine like plate glass. See then if I don't. But where'll I get a box and brushes? You shall have our brushes and my footstool. I see. Turn the stool upside down, put the brushes in, and carry a by one leg, as drunken Maud does her kid. Here you are, sir. Black your boots, sir. Shine your charter, sir. Balling. That'll do. That'll do, Bill. Famous. You needn't do it again. Holding her ears. Would you like a tart? Just one I been. Shine your boots. Do hold your tongue, Bill. There's a penny for a tart. Thank you, Matty. Thank you. Exit into the shop. Jock and Jim touching their supposed caps. Please, Please ma'am. Please, Please ma'am. Ma I like some too. I like some more than Bill. I'm very sorry, but... Feeling in her pocket. I've got a haypenny, I believe. No, there's a penny. You must share it, you know. Gives it to Jock. Knocks at Mrs. Clifford's door. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Thank, Thank you, ma'am. Ma Exit Matty into Mrs. Clifford's. Now, Jack, what's it to be? I believe I shall spend it in St. Martin's Lane. A happer's on its mind, you know, Jack. Well, you do put the stunners on me. She said we was to divide it, she did. Tain't possible. It beats my ivories. He pretends to bite it. Jim flies at him in a rage. Re-enter Bill with his mouth full. Now what are you two squabbling over? Oh, that's got a yin up and Jim's looking shirty. She told him to divide it and he won't. Who told him? Maddie. You dare, Jack. Hand over. Be hanged if I do. Then do and be hanged. You struggle. There, Jim. Now you go and buy what you like. Am I to give Jack the half? Yes. If our Matty said it. All right, Bill. Goes into the shop. I owe you one for that, Bill. Owe it me then, Jack. I do like fair play. Always did. Eating. 
You ain't a sharing of your yellow bill. Matt, he didn't say I was to. She named me a one to one break up into three, no how? Ain't in nature, Jack. You might have given me a bite anyhow, Bill. It ain't desirable, Jack. So as a trap duly considered. Here comes your share. Re-enter Jim gives a bun to Jack. I tell you what, Bill. She ain't your Maddie. She ain't nobody's Maddie. She's a angel. Now, Jim, she ain't a hangle. She ain't got no wings just ways outside her clothes. And she ain't got clothes enough to hide him. I wish I was a hangle. At it again, Bill. I do like to hear Bill a-wishin' of himself. Why, Bill? Of course they're never hungry. How do you know they ain't? We never see them loafing about nowhere else. Is Maddie your sister, Bill? Now, Jim, I ain't good enough to have a sister like she. Your sweetheart, Bill. <laughs> Dry up, Jack. Tell me about her, Bill. I didn't draw you. She lives in our court, Jim. Makes shirts and things. Oh. Bill hits Jock. Jock doubles himself up. Jim, oh, Matty ain't like other gals. I'll never see her out before this blessed day. Upon my word and honor, Jim, never. Jock wiping his nose with his sleeve. You don't know a joke from a jemmy, Bill. I'll joke you. A hangle tips you a tart, and you blocks her feathers. Get on the other side of the way, you little dirty devil. I'll give you another smeller. Cheap, too. Off with you. No, Bill, no, please. I'm very sorry. I ain't so bad as all that comes to. If he wants to go with Jimmy and me, then behave like a gentleman. I calls our Maddie a brick. None of your jaw, Jim. She ain't your Maddie. Enter Thomas. Childer, don't you know the way to paradise? Row a road or summit? Dunno, sir. You access at the Sunday school. Where's the Sunday school, Chilt? Second door round the corner, sir. Second door round the corner? Which corner, ma'am on? Round any corner. Second door's always Sunday school. Takes a sight, exeunt boys. Thomas sits down on a doorstep. Eh, but I be main weary. Surely, if Lord Dunnett's be a forsaking of me. There's that about the lost ship. Oop yon, with angels keep great flocks of em. They dunnett like to lose one of em. And they might well be helping of me to look for my lost lamb in this awful place. What has the shepherd of the sheep himself to do? God bless him. But go look for the lost ones and carry em warm. Oh, Lord, give em a matty. Oh, I'm a silly ship myself, a searching for my lost lamb. Boys begin to gather and stare. She's all the world to me. Oh, Lord, hear me, and give me a matty. Nay, or oh, get up and go look again. Rises. Ain't he a cricket, Tommy? Brian, him! Prod him, and see him jump! Why, childer, what have I done that you cry after me like a thief? Daddy long legs, daddy long legs. They hustle and crowd him. Re-enter Bill. Thomas makes a rush. They run. He seizes Bill. They gather again. And you get a mother, lad. Now, thank you. I ain't got no mother. Come of a hot, I do. Game, ain't he? Well, I'll tack you warm to your aunt, or will. Where are you now, old chap? Whoa, well, well. Scratch. Thomas holding him up by the collar and shaking his stick over him. Tell me, where's your aunt, or I'll break every bone in your body. Bill wriggling and howling and rubbing his eyes with alternate sleeves. Let me go, I say. Let me go and I'll tell you. I, I will indeed, sir. Thomas letting go. Where then, my lad? Bill starting up. In the church, sir, sir. First bin over left. Feeds musty and smells strong. <laughs> takes a sight. Thomas makes a dart. Bill dodges him. Ain't he a cricket now, Tommy? God, one leg too many for a cricket, Sam. That's what he jerks himself with, Tommy. Boys, I want to be friends with you. Here's a penny. One of the boys knocks it out of his hand. A scramble. Now, boys, don't you know we as a young woman with the name of Matty somewhere about Paradise Row? 
Yes, Holden. Mats on him! Which on him do you want, Mr. Cricket? You ain't particular, I suppose, old corner bones. Don't you fret, old stilts. We'll find you, Matty. There's plenty on them, all nice gals. I want more, Matty. Why, you'd never tell one from t'other on em. All in em wee wee glad to see old daddy long legs. Oh dear, oh dear, what an awful place this London do be, to see the childer so bad. Don't cry, Grandpa. She'd chaff you worse than us. We're only poor little innocent boys. We don't know nothing, bless you. Oh no. You'd better let her loan out her all bag of nails. She'll have it all on you now for whooping of her when she were a kid. She's a wop herself now. Mighty fine with your shirt for a great coat. <laughs> Maddy never kicks us poor innocent boys, cause we ain't got no mothers to take our parts. Boo hoo. Enter Jock, his hands in his pockets. What's the row, Bill? Don't know, Jack. Old chap called on me when I wasn't alone to him. He's after some matty or other. It can't be all matty. She wouldn't never have such a blazing old pairing as that. Supposing it was your matty, Bill, would you split and let Skull and Crossbones nab her? Would I? Would I hand over our matty to a natural enemy? Did you ax it, Jack? Natural enemy. My eye, Bill. What words you fakes? Ain't he a natural enemy, then? Ain't it your father as bumps your head and cusses you and lets you see him eat? Before it gets our matty, I'll bite. Poor lad, don't say that. Her father's the best free news getting. The more's the pity, for it's not much he can do for her. But he would do for her, he would. Go along, daddy devil. Pick your own bones and I done. Bag raker. Skin cat. Bag of nails. Skull and crossbones. Oh, daddy long legs wouldn't say his prayers. Take him by his left, left leg and throw him downstairs. Go along. Go to hell. We'll skin you. Melt you down for Tyler, we will. Only you ain't got none the red hair ring. They throw things at him. He sits down on the doorstep and covers his head with his arms. Enter Colonel Gervais. Boys run off. Oh, my Matty, my Matty. Poor old fellow. Are you hurt? Eh, yeah, you'll be a following of me too. What are you doing here? What's a more doing ye? Thee knows well enough what's o'er a doing ye. It's a raw thy fault, mon. Why, you've got a blow. Your head is cut, poor old fellow. Never ye mind, my head. You must go home. Go home, sister. Oh, go nowhere's but to the grave afore I found my chilt. Oh, come along with me. I will do all I can to find her. Perhaps I can help you after all. Oh, I'm at no doubt of that, mon. And that seems a gradely chap. Oh, I'm almost spent, and oh, I'm sick, sick. Do not let the boys shove me about again. I will not. They shan't come near you. Take my arm, poor old fellow. If you could but trust me. Hey, a uh, cab there. Exeunt. Enter Susan, peeping. I wonder whatever's come to Mary. It's long time she was out again. Enter Mary hurriedly. Oh, Susan, Susan. False. Mary, Mary. Kneels beside her and undoes her bonnet. Enter policeman. Oh, hey, oh, sir. Goes to lift her. Leave her alone, will you? Let her head down. Get some water. Drunk is she? Hold your tongue, you brood. If she'd a satin frock on instead of this here poor cotton gown, you'd had shown her the other side of your manners. Get away with you. You're too ugly to look at. Maddy, Maddy, look up, child. She mustn't lie there. Susan. Come, my girl. You keep off, I tell you. Don't touch her. She's none of your sort. Come, Maddy dear. Why don't you make a move on? You better keep a civil tongue in your head, young woman. You live lobster. I left to lock you up, I see. One violent, t'other incapable. 
you're another maddie my dear come along home that's right be off with you maddie rises let's go sue let's get farther off you can't walk child if i hadn't been so short of whittles for a week i could have carried you but it's only a step to the cook shop no money sue tries to walk oh lord what shall i do and that blue bottle there buzzing and staring at us like a dead codfish bah enter bill oh matty gracious what's her house susan she ain't well take her other arm bill and help her out of this we ain't in no christian country pluck up maddie dear come into the talk shop i'm a customer they go towards the shop exit policeman no no suki i can't abide the smell of it let me sit on the curb for a minute sits down oh father father never you mind matty if he were twenty fathers he shan't come near ye oh bill if you could find him for me he would take me home now who would have thought of that actually want her own father i'd run far enough out of the way of mine and father if he were axin after me oh me my side it's hunger poor dear sits down beside her bill aside this won't do bill oh, i'm ashamed of you bill exit no susan it's not hunger it's the old story sue maddie i never you don't mean to go for to tell me you're a breakin of your precious heart about him it's not your gentleman surely it's not him you turn sick about this time o' day maddie nods her head listlessly what's up fresh then he was pretty bobbish when you left me it's little he thinks of you i'll be bound that's true enough it's little he ever thought of me he did say he loved me though it's fifty times he did lies lies maddy all lies no susan it wasn't lies he meant it at the time that's what made it look all right oh dear oh dear but what's come to you now maddy what's fresh in it you're not turned like this all at once for nothing i've seen him seen him oh my i wish it had been me i'd ha seen him i'd ha torn his ugly eyes out they ain't ugly eyes they're big and blue and they sparkle so when he talks to her and who's her you didn't mention a her some brazen-faced imperence no the young lady at mrs clifford's ha uh ha -huh see if i do a stitch for her shan't i leave a needle in her shimmy just <laughs> what shall i do all the good's gone out of me and such a pain here keep in your breath a minute and push your ribs out it's one on them's got a top of the other such a grand creature and her colour coming and going like the shadows on the corn it's no wonder he forgot poor me but it'll burn itself out before long don't you talk like that maddie i can't bear it if i was dressed like her though and could get my colour back but laws i'm such a washed-out piece of goods beside her that's as i say matilda it's the dress makes the differ no susan it ain't it's the free look of them and the head up and the white hands and the taper fingers they're stronger than us and they're that trained like that all their body goes in one like the music at a concert i couldn't pick up a needle without going down on my knees after it it's the pain in my side sue yes it's a fine thing to be born a lady it's not the clothes sue if we was dressed ever so we couldn't come near them it's that look i don't know what speak for yourself maddie i'm not a-going to think such small beer of myself i can tell you i believe if i'd been took in time it's a big if that though sue and then she looked so good you'd hardly think it of me perhaps it's because i'm dying but for one minute i could a kissed her very shoes oh my side susan putting her arm tight round her waist does that help it maddie dear 
a little teeny bit yes suki it holds it together a bit will he break her heart too i wonder <laughs> no fear of that ladies take care of themselves they're brought up to it it's only poor girls gentlemen don't mind hurting i suppose it's the ladies fathers and brothers maddie we've got nobody to look after us they may break their hearts though for all that they won't forgive them like you then matty i dare say they're much the same as we are when it comes to that sue ha, don't say me matty i wouldn't forgive him no not if i was to die for it but what came of it child i made some noise i suppose and the lady started and then you up and spoke i turned sick and fell down oh, poor dear she got me a glass of wine but i couldn't swallow it and got up and crawled out did he see you i think he did you'll tell her in course no sue he'd hate me and i couldn't bear that oh me my side it's so bad let's try for home maddie it's a long way and there's nothing to eat when you're there but you can lie down and that's everything to them as can't sit up Matty rising i keep fancying i'm going to meet my father let's fancy it then every turn all the way home and that'll get us along there take my arm there come along exeunt slow music twilight enter bill with a three-legged stool brushes etc come it's black and all over when gents can't no longer see their boots take much use off in the shining but if i can get a penny i will i must take a tart to marry well this here damaged one laying his hand on his stomach won't go to sleep this night enter waterfield black your boots for a party sir waterfield aside a very rascal i saw her speaking to but wasn't she a brick not to split that's what i call devotion now there are some of them capable of it i'll set her up for life i'd give a cool thousand it hadn't happened though i saw her father too hanging about your vases yesterday clean your boots sir shine em till they grin like a cheshire cat eating cheese shine away you beggar bill turning up his trousers i ain't no beggar sir shine for a shiner's fair play do you live in this neighbourhood no sir well then bill feeling where a pocket should be i don't appear to have a card about me sir but my address is lambs court chamomile street leastways i do my sleeping not far off it i i've lived there what living i have done since ever i wore anyways as i knows on do you happen to know of a girl of the name of pearson no sir i can't say as how i recollect the name is she an old girl or a young un you young liar i saw you talking to her not two hours ago did you know sir that's all ain't it bless you i talks to everybody i ain't proud sir well do you see this holding up a sovereign that's one of them tidings what don't require much seeing sir there pride is the butterfly tell the twin sir i'll give you this if you'll do something for me and another to that when the thing's done thanks stealing sir no cause you say matty who did you say oh madge as it's the beds at top in the shop night take stealing you say sir what do you take me for i want you to find out for me where the girl pearson lives that's all bill snatching the sovereign and putting it in his mouth now then sir what's the young woman like rather tall thin dark hair large dark eyes and long white hands her name's matilda matty pearson the girl you were talking to i'll tell you on this very spot an hour or two ago 
bill dropping the sovereign and stooping to find it golly it is on my shall you know her again any boy as was in the house would know his own grandmother by them spots besides i remember such a girl dressing of me this morning if you say her it was i'll detect her for you there's a good boy what's your name timothy sir what else never had no other leastways as i knows on well timothy there's the other sov and it's yours the moment you take me to her look at it my eye is she a square mole sir what do you mean by that green you are to be sure she ain't one who steals or not she she's a seamstress a needle woman or something of the sort and where should i find you sir let me see to-morrow night on the steps of st martin's church ten o'clock but if i don't find her it may be a week or a month or come whether you find her or not and let me know oh serene sir there you are sir brush your trousers sir no leave em don't forget now on a bright sir not if i knows it sir there's that other skid you know all right sir anything more sir damn your impudence get along exit bill watches him into mrs clifford's now by all the hungry gums of r b r here's a swell arter on matty a right regular swell i knows him sovereigns in red socks what's come to our matty here's daddy long legs are there with his penny and his blessing and here's this ere mighty swell with his sovereigns and his red socks and she's hungry poor gal this here yellow boy i ain't got no faith in swells no more than daddy long legs is i ain't supposing he wants to marry her not if i knows it he ain't half good enough for her too many quids going a flinging on him about like buttons he's been a cracking on cribs he has i ain't a going to introduce our matty to no sich blokes as him they're fathers or loviers for me says i for this here pebble or paradise what's to be done with the cherub i can't tell her a lie about it and who'll break it up for a cove like me looking just as if i'd been a tarn myself and crept through a rag bag they'd juggle me and what would matty say then i wish i hadn't a dodged it i'm blowed if i don't toss it over a bridge then the gent ain't got the weight on his done about on me oh lord what shall i do with it i wish i'd skied it in his face i don't believe it's a good un i don't bites it Whew. the do tastes very nasty it's nothing better than a gilt farthing just what a cove might look for from such a swill goes to your street lamp and examines it law there's a bobby exit re-enter to the lamp i wish the gentleman had given me a penny i can't do nothing with this here quid where am i to put it i ain't got no pocket if i was to stowed in my tater trap i couldn't wag my red rag mother madge would soon help me buy the chops or i've got no way to ply it oh lor it's all i've got and madge lets nobody go to bed without the toppings it's all up with bill for the night where's the odds there's a first-class hotel by the river the adelphi arches they calls it but they'll take me in fast enough and i can go to sleep with it in my cheek cause is past talking to you there nobody sees me in that ere aunt a luxury it'll take me for a millionaire with a skid in his mouth tain't a bit cold to-night neither going what do they say a armed of luxury i suppose a cause she's wife to my uncle exit slow music the night passes a policeman crosses twice thomas crosses between dawn re-enter bill oh i'm hanged if this ere blessed quid ain't a burn of me like a red old farden i'm blessed if i've slept more than half the night i woke up once it 
but it a slipping down Red Lane. I wish I had swallowed it. Then nobody ought to ask me where I got it. I don't wonder his rich coat was turned out such a bad lot. I believe the devil's in this here. Knocks at Mrs. Clifford's door. James opens. He is shutting it again. Bill shows in his tool. Hello, Blazes. Where's your manners? Is that the way you behave to callers on your governor's business? James half opening the door. Get about your own business, you imperent boy. I'm about it now, young man. I want to see your governor. You've got business with him, have you, eh? Amazing precocity. You've hit it. I have got business with him, doorpost. Not in the very smallest with you, doorpost. Except the knife boy's been neglected of your feet bags this morning. James would slam the door. Bill shows in his tool. Don't you try that air little game again, young man. For if I lose my temper and takes to horror, you wish yourself father. A humbug you are. I ain't got no governor, boy. The master as belongs to me is a mistress. Then that ere gentleman is comes and goes at your master, eh? What gentleman, stupid? Oh, it don't matter. What have you got to say to him? Some are pickled. He'll keep. I'll give him a message if you like. Well, you may tell him the bargain's off. And if he wants his money, it's a waiting of him round the corner. You little blackguard. Do you suppose a gentleman's going to deliver such a message as that? Be off with you, you himp. Makes a dart at him. Bill dodging him. How do you do, clumsy? Don't touch me, I ain't nice. Why? What was you made for, parrot? You them calves your own rear now? Is that a quid or a farthing? Have a shot now, shins. None of your imperence, young blackie. Hand me over the money, and I'll give it to the gentleman. Do you see anything particular green in my eye, Rainbow? James makes a rush. Bill gets down before him. James tumbles over him. Bill blacks his face with his brush. Bill running a little way. Ha ha ha! Bill Shoe Black, he's Mark. Who's blacking now? You owes me a penny. Two pence. To such an ugly job. Ain't shiny. I'll come back and shine you for another penny. Good morning, Jim Crow. Take my advice, and don't or never count apply your winner go afore you've opened your hoister. Likewise. But I don't melt on a cold tater. Exit. Exit James into the house, banging the door. Enter Waterfield, followed by Bill. Please, sir, I have been watching for you. Go to the devil! I'd rather not. So there's your subring. Go along. Meet me where I told you. I won't. There's your skid. Be off, or I'll give you in charge. Hey, policeman! Exit. Well, I'm blowed. This quid'll be hanging on me. Damn you! Throws it fiercely on the ground and stamps on it. Saves me right for chafe in the old on. He didn't look a bad sort. For a governor. Now I reflect it, so I heard Matty Spoony on some far or other. A fool. Oh, law! I'll get Jim and Jack to help me look out for him. Enter Thomas. Lord have mercy. Talk the old on. I'm very particular glad as I found you, Daddy. I have been looking for you. Leastways, I was a going to look for you this very moment as you turns up. Oh, I chaffed you like as a raw little monkey yesterday, Daddy, and I'm very sorry. But you see, fathers ain't nice in this here part of the continent. Enter James in plain clothes, watching them. They ain't no good no how to nobody. If I was a husband and father, I don't know as how I should be one myself. Perhaps I might think it were my turn to break arms and legs. And then more than one father is dead. It's no wonder the boys is a plaguey lot, Daddy. Go away, boy. Dost to hear? Oh, I've seen so much wickedness since I've come to London that I don't know whether to break the head or to go with the... There be thieves and there be robbers. Never fear, Daddy. You ain't worth robbing of, I don't think. How dost to know that? Oh, I've more and I want to lose about me. The Matty will have some to eat. Of she, Daddy? Summer to eat, boy? 
be more matty hungry don't you think me lay in many's the time daddy ye aye afore a dinner and offer it too daddy oh lord then what does her do when who's hungry grins and bears it come and see her daddy oh lord my matty and nothing to eat go on boy i'm bound to follow you tack me where you like or go come along then daddy james collaring him hello young un you're the rascal as stole the sovereign i saw you don't know what you're up to i never stole nothing oh no of course not what's that in your fist now catches bill's hand and forces it open there bill drops his tool on james foot throws up the coin catches it with his other hand and puts it in his mouth there there the like of that we were a-going we a thief or were never you mind daddy it were guff to me that's what they allers says sir you come along i'd be obliged to you sir if you would come to and say you saw him nay i cannot say or say him steal it you saw it in his hand ye i did it was guff to me i tell you honest boy this one looks like it don't he sir what do you think of yourself you young devil a decoying of a grey-haired old gentleman like this why sir him and his pals that are taking every penny you had about you murdered you they might i've known as much it's a good thing i happened to be on the spot come along you bad boy i didn't take it and i won't go come along they'll change it for you at the lock-up you didn't see me steal it you ain't never going to give me in charge wrong again young un that's precisely what i am a-gonna do oh sir please sir I i'm an honest boy it's the bible truth i'll kiss plain books on it i won't ax you why sir he ain't even one of the shoe brigade he ain't got a red coat bless my soul he ain't even got a box nothing but a scrubby pair of brushes as i'm alive he ain't no shoe black he's a thief as pretends to black shoes and picks pockets you're a liar i never picked a pocket in my life bad language you see what more would you have who'd ever a thought of such wickedness in a boy like that i ain't a wicked boy no nay don't thou tell me that I may gammer me and hurried and scurried me as if i'd been a mack of a devil you did he's one of the worst boys i know this timothy is one of the very worst boys in all london bill aside timothy eh i twigs it's rainbow by peter and bull look here old gentleman this here was a bad covers and taking advantage of your willingness i knows him his master give me the sovereign he got to me to tell him where your matty was don't you fancy you're gonna take an experienced old gentleman like that with your cock and bull stories come along i say hey police here you are takes the coin from his mouth rubs it dry on his jacket and offers it i don't want it give it to old hunks there he shot no sees matty I were right to chivy him after all. James taking the coin. Now look here, Timothy. I'm a detective officer, but I won't never be hard on no boy as wants to make a honest living. So you be off. I'll show the old gentleman where he wants to go. Bill moves two paces and takes a sight at him. The Lord be praised. Dost to know how I'm at it, then? it's the duty of a detective officer to know every girl in his beat my eye there's a one -er. tap me to her sir and i'll pray for you i will and if i catch you nearer than mile end i'll give you in charge at once bill bolting five yards he's a humbug daddy though he'll serve you right he'll melt you down for taller 
He ain't no detective. I know him. Go away. Goodbye, Daddy. He don't know your Matty. Goodbye, Skellington. Exit. Eh, yeah, such a boy. Let me see. You want a girl of the name of Matty. Oh, I do, sir. The name is not an uncommon one. There's Matty Kent. Nay, nee, it's not her. Then there's Matty Winchfield. Nay, nee, it's not her. Then there's Matty Pearson. Yeah, that's who. That's who. Where? Where? Well, it's too far for a man of your age to walk. But I'll call a cab, and we'll go comfortable. But I can't afford to pay for a cab, as you call it. You don't suppose I'm going to put an honest man like you to expense? It's but reasonable I should pay, but thou knows best. Hey, cab there. Exeunt. Re-enter Bill following him. I'll have an eye on him, though. The swellers give me the yellow boy. He's his master. Well, old codger. He believe any cove but the one is tells him the truth. Exit. Enter from the house, Mrs. Clifford. Enter from opposite side, Colonel Jervis. I was just coming to see you, Clara. And I was going to see you. How's Arthur today? I thought you would have come yesterday. My poor boy is as dependent on me as if I were not his father. I am very anxious about him. The fever keeps returning. Fortune seems to have favoured your mad scheme, Walter. Or something better than fortune. You have had rare and ample opportunity. You may end the farce when you please, and in triumph. On the contrary, Clara, it would be nothing but an anticlimax to end what you are pleased to call the farce now. As if I could make a merit of nursing my own boy. I did more for my black servant. I wish I had him here. You would like to double the watch, would you? Something has vexed you, Clara. I never liked the scheme, and I like it less every day. I have had no chance yet. He has been ill all the time. I wish you could come and see him a little oftener. He doesn't want me. You are everything now. Besides, I can't come alone. Why not? Constance would fancy I did not want to take her. Then why not take her? I have my reasons. What are they? Never mind. I insist upon knowing them. It would break my heart, Walter, to quarrel with you, but I will if you use such an expression. But why shouldn't you bring Miss Lacordaire with you? He's but a boy, and it might put some nonsense in his head. She's a fine girl. You make a friend of her. She's a good girl, and a ladylike girl, but I don't want to meddle with the bulwarks of society. I hope to goodness they will last my time. Clara... I begin to doubt whether pride be a Christian virtue. I see. You'll be a radical before long. Everything is going that way. I don't care what I am. So I do what's right. I'm sick of all that kind of thing. What I want is bare honesty. I believe I'm a Tory as yet, but I should be a radical tomorrow if I thought justice lay on that side. If a man falls in love with a woman... Why shouldn't he marry her? She may be unfit for him. How should he fall in love with her, then? Men don't fall in love with birds. It's a risk, a great risk. None the greater that he pleases himself, and all the more worth taking. I wish my poor boy... Your poor boy might please himself, and yet not succeed in pleasing you, brother. Colonel Gervais aside. She knows something. I must go and see about his dinner. Goodbye, sister. Goodbye, then. You will have your own way. This once, Clara. Exeunt severally. End of Act Two.